Well, welcome. I'm so thrilled to have you here with us today. As a Christian life coach, I understand the challenges of trying to juggle it all. Today, we're diving into a topic that I know is close to many of us because we all suffer from it, and that's self-sabotage and specifically perfectionism, which is the catalyst of self-sabotage, like a sneaky little thief robbing us of joy and contentment. It whispers in our ears that we must be flawless in every single way. But guess what? That mindset often leads us to self-sabotage. How can we silence this voice and embrace the beauty of imperfection? Let's get into it. Welcome to The Thought Vault, where we learn to unlock our minds to live with more purpose and bold intention. I'm your host, Emily Vermillion. Take a deep breath and let's get started. First, let's remember to trust in God's perfect timing and plan. Ecclesiastes 3.11 reminds us of this. They have made everything beautiful in its time. We are perfect as we are, not because of our achievements, but because we are children of God. And isn't that liberating? In order to slay this perfectionism dragon, first we have to change and fix our mindset and specifically learn to focus more on God than ourselves, I know. It's hard to do. But why should we even care about this? Perfectionism keeps our perfect Savior from shining His light and who He is through our life. If we're not taking any action because we're self-sabotaging, what are we doing? If we are too prideful, we will not be seeking God's desires. We will be storing up what we think is good for ourselves. And this has nothing to do with us in the grand scheme. This being the purpose of us being here. We get to share in our journey of being here. We get to experience our journey in being here, but we are not the purpose of the world. I hate to break it to you. So I'm gonna share with you four mindset tips to fix our heart on God and stop letting the grip of perfectionism keep us stuck and stopped. Action mindset tip number one is start each day with reminding yourself of your inherent worth as a child of God. Write it down, say it out loud, sing it out in the shower in the morning. When we see our worth is in God and not ourselves, we are free. We are free. We can actually learn to love our flaws. Yes, instead of striving for for an unattainable perfection, let's embrace our weaknesses. As 2 Corinthians 12, 19 says, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. By accepting our imperfections, we grow in humility and lean on divine grace and strength. Not because of us, but because of God. Friend, we have already won because Jesus has claimed us. We belong to God. And therefore, we have no faults that take us out of his grace and his love. We are worthy and perfect is not a qualification. Actionable mindsets tip number two, make a list of your perceived weaknesses. Then next to each one, write down how it could potentially be a strength or an opportunity for growth. This exercise helps shift your perspective and see your weaknesses in a new light. I love doing this with my coaching clients because it helps them to see that these weaknesses are not a barrier. They're not an obstacle. They're a path. And why are they a path? Because God has already said that through our weaknesses, we are made whole by him, through him. And what better way to get to our full potential than relying on God in the areas that we aren't good at or the areas that we fail at? the areas that keep us back because of our flesh, our brokenness. It allows for a much greater prayer life and relationship with God when we have an awareness of our weaknesses. It's like having this scalpel in our hand where we can, with precision, excise these areas of our life and allow God's healing in those places. If we're perfect, where does God go? Why would we need his salvation? The truth is nobody is perfect, not one, only Jesus. I encourage you to consider your weaknesses as light posts for God's presence in your life. Proverbs 16.3 encourages us to commit whatever we do to the Lord, and he will establish our plans. Our weaknesses are like counseling sessions already on the calendar, and we're meeting with our great counselor. Don't be held back. Work on making your weaknesses stronger and experiencing growth in that area. This is a much better mindset to embrace and go forward in hope and excitement and expectant faith to see the fruit of God's presence in our life and what a testimony that will be for others. Actionable mindset tip number three, keep a victory jar. 
Each time you achieve something, make a note of it. Any little progress you make, whether it's, hey, I feel called to open up this business, like God's in that. What little step did you take today? Did you research a business name? Like in the scheme of starting a business, that might seem like a small little thing, but like you need to take note of all the things that you're doing. Keep a log of it, whether you're writing it on a sheet of paper, in a journal, in a note on your phone. When you keep a log of your progress, then whenever you are feeling down or doubting yourself, pull out those notes and remind yourself what all this effort is for. I love looking back at my notes from when I was first called to start my blog. Yes, I had a blog. It was called Bold Pearls. It's still out there. It's still the hub of everything that I do now. And it was the catalyst for everything I do now. So I don't plan to get rid of it. All the ancient writings are still there. You can go look in the archive, but boldpearls.com was my blog. I felt absolutely compelled to start that blog. I was in a season of my life that was very challenging personally and spiritually. And one night in my angst and in my just depression, I was just praying and had been praying for relief, for guidance, for understanding, for discernment. And like a little lightning bolt, God said, start a blog. And it has led me to progress, to get certified in Christian life coaching, to take seminary courses and do all this stuff, ultimately leading here, getting myself on camera and all of this. So I love looking back. I, I journal my prayers a lot. I journal my prayers. I write down my thoughts. I have a million notebooks and a million planners. I'm a planner girl at heart. And I love, I keep them all and I love looking back and they give me so much insight because God speaks to us in so many ways. And there's so much that you forget. Satan loves to let us forget what God has done in our life. And I have mom brain to the fullest extent. I have four brain cells at this point bumping around and I cannot even, I can't remember things. I cannot. So if I didn't archive them in some way, I honestly would have a hard time remembering every instance, every prayer that God has responded to, that every understanding and moment of clarity that he's given me during my Bible study time at church, whatever. I try to journal all of these instances. And I write in my planner a lot, my dreams, my aspirations. And I love going back and look because you can just see how some dreams never came true for good reason. Some dreams shifted visions of where I thought my life would be and seeing how it all plays out. All that to say, journaling is great and keeping a record of your progress is very helpful and keeping momentum and motivation and a healthy mindset going. So there's so much truth in what God shared with me then. And when I look back on those written words, I just feel encouraged and I'm reminded why the efforts matter, why the journey has been my journey. And it will do the same for you. It's incredibly easy to just get caught up in daily life and lose sight of what we're doing and why we're doing it. We also can get ourselves stuck in the weeds or the failures along the way. And we start to question why, what is this all for? Does it even matter? Is there even a reason to this? Do I even care about this anymore? And Satan would just love to keep us there. I often think of the story of Job. You wanna talk about a man who was completely defeated by every standard a person would usually compare to. Job could have given up. He could have lost all hope. He could have given up living. And most would commiserate and under, have an understanding of why. But God, what's so unbelievable about Job's life isn't all this nuance and struggle and strife and just absolute nightmare stuff that happened to him. It's that he never threw in the towel. He never just finally threw in the towel. So let that be a grand example to us, to let go of our ideals and instead live in faith, even when it doesn't make sense, even when it doesn't make sense. Let's shift our focus from perfection to progress. Philippians 3, 12 tells us to press on towards our goals, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. Instead of aiming for perfection, let's aim for growth and becoming the best versions of ourselves. Actionable mindset tip number four, that's a tongue twister. Set realistic, achievable goals for yourself. Why? Because by creating this form of accountability in a goal and having a goal, you can help break down the wall of self-sabotage by intentionally making different choices and thinking new things in order to have different results in your life. Therefore, set goals. Do not stop pursuing achievement. 
achievement in strengthening those areas of weakness in your life, achievement in what God has planned for you when he expertly created you. Set your mind on things you're working toward, not what's stopping you from getting there or where you've been or why you can't. Think ahead. Have hopeful expectation in the faith that you have in God, who he says you are, that you are worthy, that you are perfectly made because he says so, and that you have been saved. So therefore, you are already victorious. Break down those goals. Break down any of the goals that you make into small steps and celebrate each step and keep a log of that and evaluate God's presence along the way and the will for your next thing to do. Remember, progress, no matter how small, is progress. And it's an act of faith to embrace the actual beauty of our imperfections because they inevitably drive us closer to dependence on God. And ultimately, that brings the soul satisfaction we are all longing for. That brings the ultimate joy and contentment that we long to obtain. So have you set your goals? Consider these mindset tips that we've talked about. And it's my goal this year to offer tangibles too. For all the life coaching speak that I share, the one-on-one clients that I've had, my heart isn't for you to only just hear these tips and such. It's, I want you to take action. I desire for you to hear the word of God and bear fruit from the heart that you have for him. And I want you to just explode with a zeal for life. In order to help foster daily thought that emboldens your awareness and helps you track these experiences of breaking free from self-sabotage, I did create a tool with you in mind, and it's simply called the Monthly Motivation and Growth Planner. It's a planner for keeping up and tracking progress, celebrating victories, and keeping your focus on growth rather than perfection. It's not just a planner. It's a mindset tool. It's a journal that helps you apply the principles that we've talked about today. And it's a way for you to imagine and start to have a clear vision of your goals and what you want your future to look like. It's for celebrating your wins and ending the day knowing you're one step closer to becoming the best version of yourself by having God's presence active in your life every single day. That's what our monthly growth planner was created to do, to help you with, to just be a companion. It's a journal that you can use as a support all throughout the year. It's digital, so you can import it into your GoodNotes app or whatever PDF app that you have. You can also print it month after month. It's a companion for you. So go grab that. It's literally seven bucks (laughs) and it helps support the show and it will be a great companion to you on this new 2024 journey. I hope after listening to this, you're ready to silence the voice of perfectionism and embrace the beauty of progress. Go grab your planner and let's embark on this journey together. One day at a time, one step at a time. Remember, it's all about progress over perfection. And until next time, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, Romans 12, 2. Go live with bold intention, everyone. Hey there, bold listeners. Just a quick break to share three things with you. First up, if you've got a question or a situation, consider our Dear Emily segment. Submit your stories or dilemmas anonymously, and I'll tackle them with heartfelt advice and encouragement from a Christian life coaching perspective. Just head over to the submission link below or in the show notes if you're listening on your favorite podcast app. Next, jump into our vibrant community at boldpearls.com forward slash insiders. It's our free Facebook community group where inspiration, support, and fellowship are just a click away. Be a part of our Bold Life family where faith and connection thrive. And last, don't miss out on our newly launched Substack channel. It's the new hub for exclusive Bold Life content and discussions. By subscribing, you're not only getting extra goodies and content to help you, but also supporting the show. I really do appreciate it. So remember, dear your submissions, join the Facebook group, and check out our Substack channel. Three ways to enhance your bold life experience. Bye for now. 